Dependence injection is one extremely simple yet powerful pattern. It may have a scary name, but let's check out what it actually means. You may end up surprised how simple it actually is. Let's first take a look at the word dependency and its meaning in the context of object-oriented programming. I will show you a pseudocode implementation on the left and visualize its interpretation on the right. First, we'll create a module called user. This module contains a method that sends the user an activation email using the mailer module. In other words, it will instantiate a mailer service and use its send activation mail method. As you can see from the pseudocode, our user module is using the mailer module to implement a part of its functionality. This, this makes the mailer module a dependency of the user class. So let's take a look what dependency injection means. The goal of dependency injection is to invert the dependency responsibility. This means that our service will get the dependency instance via the constructor instead of instantiating it itself. If we take a look at our example, you can see that instead of the user activation service worrying about instantiating the mailer object, it just receives it from the outside and uses it when needed. This helps the service to only be in charge of the business logic and not riddled with the instantiation logic of its dependencies. Now that we know what dependency injection is, let's check out why to bother to implement this pattern and what are the challenges to consider when doing so. Dependency injection helps us test our code because it ensures that the classes we built can be instantiated independently. Even more, it allows us to switch out the dependency during testing. For example, we may not want our mailer class to send out real production emails while running unit tests, so we might switch out its implementation with a simple service which will just fake the email delivery taking place. Using the I will also help us stick to the single responsibility principle because it will keep the classes doing only their job and not worrying about the instantiation logic of its dependencies. Our codebase also becomes less rigid. If we want to switch out the mailer module with a completely different method of message delivery, that will not be an issue as long as they both implement the same interface. As you saw in the example earlier, DI causes ugly instantiation logic to bundle up on the layer above, which can look messy. To solve this, we use dependency containers, which are covered by another video. When choosing or implementing a dependency container framework, you have to take care, because once you start using one, it will be next to impossible to replace it in the future. A dependency container is in the absolute core of a project, and it will be used in an every single module, which is a good reason to choose it carefully. Some people would argue that DI causes a rise in code complexity. I wouldn't say that is necessarily the case. But it is worth mentioning that DI can motivate you to create unnecessary layers of abstraction you normally would not create. So take care. 